the world is awash with people who say, start fracking and start fracking now and throw open the North Sea again. Is that wise? I think they're two different things. I think when it comes to the, to the North Sea, we already have an, an established infrastructure. We have companies operating in the North Sea, um, but it is a mature basin. It's already in a process of decline. And I think it's going to be very difficult to arrest that decline. Um, but the government's had a long-term policy of trying to maximize economic recovery from the North Sea. I think onshore in terms of shale gas, of course, the government is looking, is asked the, the British Geological Survey to look at the evidence around the moratorium, but it's not an overnight solution. Uh, and I think government ministers have also said it will only go ahead if communities are, are happy for it to do so. And I don't think there's any evidence that's the case. So I wouldn't start, I wouldn't see fracking as part of the answer. Um, and it will take time to realize uh, any benefits from new licensing rounds in the North Sea. Much more effective in the short term to focus on trying to reduce demand. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. And, and, and easing the burden on those who are making that demand, which is a perfect cue to bring in Andy Mayer, Chief Operating Officer at the Institute of Economic Affairs. Um, if the government were to try and do more to help people, and that includes businesses as well as individual citizens with those rising energy costs, one suggestion is a windfall tax on the massive profits that the oil companies are making, and that is now very popular amongst the public. You say it's economically illiterate. Well, we do. Um, it's generally the sign that the government has run out of ideas when they're thinking about introducing arbitrary taxes on sectors or individual companies, simply because they don't know where else to get the money from. Money they themselves could be enjoying in much greater depth had they not conducted the policy they conducted on both fracking and the North Sea. But it's quite important to remember that they actually do have a windfall tax on the North Sea already. It's the ring-fenced corporation tax and the supplementary charge which means that when normal companies pay 19% this year on their corporation tax, the oil and gas companies in the North Sea will be paying 40%. Mm. That's going to raise the Office for Budget Responsibility says about £8 billion this year and about 3 to £4 billion last year. So any politician commenting on this issue really should be starting from the point of saying, what is it they are going to do with that windfall money they have already got? And if they don't have an answer, they're just not serious. They're just sure. flannelling around looking for things to tax. Let me bring Michael Bradshaw back in uh, at that point, because Sunak clearly is giving it some serious consideration because he's even used the language of saying, uh, you know, unless you oil companies invest in the future, all of those things that you were just describing, uh, then you will be hit by this tax. Does that worry you as an observer and commentator on the industry? I'm not sure it worries me, but I, th I think they have to understand the consequences of, of actions because this is this, well, this is an international industry. The, the North Sea has to attract investment uh, in, a, in in terms of global competition, and the, the majority of actors in. Uh, operating in the North Sea are not UK-based companies, um, and they have options to look elsewhere. So I think there's a delicate balancing act here. And of course, the government also wants to try and square new a new licensing round with its net zero climate ambitions. So I, I think you know, the problem may be, at the end of the day, you make the North Sea a less attractive place to invest, not a more attractive place.